Representative Mo Brooks is a coward. He is reportedly so terrified of the lawsuit brought against him by Representative Eric Swalwell that he has been hiding from process servers for almost a month just to avoid being subpoenaed. Talk about sad baby. So now, if you're not familiar with Eric Swalwell's lawsuit, uh, basically it's alleging that Brooks, along with Donald Trump, Donald Ch uh, Trump Jr., Rudy Giuliani, they all had broken the law when they incited the riot at the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, the lawsuit also alleges that they broke the Anti-Terrorism Act and aided and abetted the violent insurrectionists while inflicting emotional distress on members of Congress. Even members of Congress, by the way, who were like, oh, January 6th, nothing happened. Eh. Those same people were caught on camera barricading the doors and fearing for their lives. Yeah. Right. Uh, so now both lawsuits, and that's not the only one. There's another one uh, from another congressman uh, who was also suing at least uh, Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani. Uh, this one's a little bit more comprehensive, uh, but they basically use it as a, as a way of uh, basically getting this lawsuit, like they're using a law uh, and citing a law that was passed after the Civil War, okay? It was intended to combat violence from the KKK. And basically, it allows civil actions to be brought against people who use force, intimidation, or threat to prevent anyone from upholding their duties of office. Now, certification, of course, being one of those duties. Uh, yes, Congress has to certify an election. And if you try to, I don't know, break up that certification process, delay that certification process, or intimidate people during the cer uh, certification process, then yes, it would be against that particular statute. So now, of course, it doesn't get used very often. I don't think it's ever been used. Uh, but at the same time, it's technically on the books. So they could use it, and you could see why there is an actual case. Uh, now, Swalwa claims the four men, uh, Giuliani, Don Jr., Mo Brooks, and Trump, um, Trump Jr., they prompted the attack on Congress by essentially inciting them, egging them on with repeated public assertions that there was voter fraud, they didn't find any voter fraud, uh, at least not widespread. They found a couple of cases, and actually they were done by Trump supporters, ironically. They were caught, but very, in reality, of course, very, very few uh, amount, uh, you know, uh, instances of voter fraud are actually ever found, much less prosecuted. It's not a thing that happens in this country. Uh, and so, you know... Nonetheless, they continue to push this voter fraud lie without any sort of evidence to back it up. Because, if well, if you're a Republican, you don't really need the evidence. Nah, who cares? You know, evidence, shm evidence, come on. Uh, no, we just want to pass anti-voting laws. We want to block vote, you know, we want to enact voter ID. We want to block ways to try to, you know, in increase the level of people voting, the amount of people voting. We, we don't like democracy. Because it turns out, when we have democracy, well, we lose as Republicans. And, and of course, you had the uh, godfather of the modern conservative movement, Paul Weyrich, admitting that during a speech, like back in the 80s, where he was like, hey, uh, if, if more people vote, we lose. So let's, let's not have people vote. Let's do the voter ID. Uh, and now, of course, Trump comes along, and he's like, oh, uh, voter ID, uh, voter ID, uh, we're, uh, voter fraud, voter fraud. Oh, that, well, voter fraud just means that any time that I lose something, uh, then there's voter fraud. And it's just a way to cover his ego. But nonetheless, he was out there, just like Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump Jr. and Mo Brooks, inciting that crowd on January 6th. Each man had told the crowd that Biden's electoral certification in Congress could be blocked. They even, by the way targeted Mike Pence. Mike Pence, oh, Mike Pence. Oh, he could block this, he could single-handedly block the certification process. He could do that, but he refuses to do so because he's weak. That's your vice president. And no, he doesn't actually have that power. He can't actually go and do that. It's just a ceremonial thing. Uh, he's not able to actually exercise any of that power, but they don't care. They don't care. And his own supporters were then, after they broke into the Capitol, 
chanted, Hang Mike Pence. Yeah, because of course. Of course. Of course. Um, that said, Brooks was among many of the Republicans that spoke on January 6th, Stop the Steel rally that led to that attack on the Capitol. Here's what Brooks said. Quote, Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Now you can say, look, that doesn't necessarily call for violence. I mean, you know, people say, oh, taking names and kicking ass, uh, you know, colloquially and whatever, right? It doesn't necessarily mean calling for violence. It's rhetorical. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, you could say that. It really comes down to the interpretation. I mean, some in the crowd appeared to have take, taken it in a way that meant go to the Capitol building and kick someone's ass. So I'm just saying. Now, Brooks uh, denied responsibility for the riot, telling a radio show host the day after the attack that he absolutely had no regrets for what he said. He later then said in a statement that no one at the rally interpreted my remarks to be anything other than what they were. Pep talk after the derriere kicking conservatives suffered in the dismal 2020 elections. Really? I would say that a couple of people in the crowd did take it differently. And I, I don't know. I guess you could say, hey, look, however they interpreted it. <laughs> well, that's on them. Well, it's not necessarily on me. But I disagree. I think it is incitement. And I think Brooks absolutely knows it. In fact, Brooks has been using his involvement in January 6th in Facebook ads for his campaign, while at the same time, by the way, running away from any responsibility for his role in inciting people on January 6th. Uh, in fact, counsel had spoken to two different staff members on two separate occasions to try to catch up with Mo Brooks, and each time was promised a return call, which never came. So on the one hand, he, he doesn't want to take responsibility, and on the other hand, he absolutely wants to be known as somebody who, oh, yeah, supports January 6th and all the American patriots, yeah, that, uh, you know, uh, that, that fought for Trump. Cake and eat it, too. And remember, MAGA chuds love the attack on the Capitol oh, when they're not blaming Antifa, by the way, for it. Uh, but here's the thing. Going back to the poll, did earlier this week, how you have 15 to 20% of American voters that believe in the QAnon nonsense, okay? Now, there are some other findings in that. 20% of Americans, by the way, uh, responded that, there will, that they think that there will be a storm coming to sweep out the elites and install the true leaders of this country. Come on. I mean, what do you think that means? Who do you think that means? Obviously, Donald Trump. To them, at least. Um, not only that, but Magachuds are also saying that in August, the president will, uh, the former president will be reinstated and replace Joe Biden. In complete and utter insanity. That's not going to happen, but guess what? They believe it. 15% of Americans think that, oh, no, no, American patriots should be prepared to use violence in order to make sure that Donald Trump gets back into power. So this is serious, and yet Mo Brooks is out here trying to raise money from it. Come on. And then runs away like a bitch when somebody tries to hold him to account. And again, this is nothing more than a civil suit. But he knows he's full of crap. If he actually believed this, he'd go to, for he'd go to court and he'd defend it just like Mike Pillow. Pillow guy can't wait to go to court. He's like, oh, I got the evidence. Oh, yeah, I got the evidence. Just take me to court. Just, oh, I can't wait. Yeah, Supreme Court, not nothing. It's going to reinstate Trump. No, not going to happen. Not in a million years. But he still thinks it. But, Ma, uh, but Mo Brooks, Mo Brooks is a slimy-ass politician. And, and, of course, still kiss, uh, kisses Trump's ass because the Republican Party is the party of Donald Trump. It is the cultist party. Mo Brooks is sad. He's a sad, pathetic, slimy politician using his base for re-election cash so that, of course, he can protect his power, position, and his money. One more thing here. 
I want to show you a video. This is uh, Swanwell's attorney going on CNN uh, to talk about how hard it's been to track down Mo Brooks. Take a look. So, and obviously not routine here. I mean, your court filing says you've had to actually even hire a private investigator. Uh, and in the filing, you said this person spent many hours over many days in April and May at locations in multiple jurisdictions attempting to locate and serve Brooks to no avail. When we look back at that time frame, uh, we saw Brooks did spend a lot of time in Alabama. He also was, uh, we show him here, speaking on the House floor. Um, I'm just trying to understand what lengths have you gone to to serve Brooks? How, why is it so hard to to give hand him these papers? I mean, that's what so everyone understands. That's what serving is about. You just got to go to someone's door and they open it up and hello, here you go. You're served. Right. Well, the problem here is that, the, you know, Mo Brooks's door is under lock and key. And until very recently, thanks to the insurrection that he in part in, incited, um, there was just no access to the primary place that you know he was for much of the day. Um, you know, tracking somebody down is not, I mean, there's no magic number of times or no magic formula. It just takes persistence and, you know, luck sometimes. And it's not as though uh, we're not claiming Brooks has been hiding in a, you know, in a bunker somewhere, but. <laughs> oh, is he hiding in the bunker? Well, he's not going to say he's hiding in the bunker. But I'm going to say it. Mo Brooks is hiding in the bunker. Sad baby bunker bitch. In fact, you know what? Mo Brooks, no longer Mo Brooks. He's now Bunker Brooks. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.